I am a traveler, just as you are. My journey was and will be different from yours, but there are things, places, experiences, and thoughts we share in a lifetime. We, you and I, live together on a planet of infinite diversity and complexity, sharing a universe full of more wonders, very large and very tiny. Some things can be visualized easily, but other aspects of our existence are more enigmatic and not easily described. But here goes. Here are lines composed above Tintern Abbey by William Wordsworth. The sounding cataract haunted me like a passion. The tall rock the mountain and the deep and gloomy wood, their colors and their forms were then to me an appetite. And quoting from the book, Color Travels Through the Paint Box, written by Victoria Finlay, Copyright 1998. A potted plant, previously ignored on the window sill of his study, had produced a single perfect flower in just one day, and that flower was the exact shade of red that he had been trying so hard to make. He said, I wanted to find a way to understand what I was searching for in my life. I remembered the red of that flower and how, where a human being with a sophisticated laboratory has failed again and again, nature had succeeded with just earth, water, air, and light, effortlessly. I agree with author Victoria Finlay's observation that people's attempts over the years to reproduce nature's effortless colors often have been accidental. She points out in her book, Color, that, quote, almost all dyes and pigments are poor imitations, pastiches even, of the colors found in nature. Our human senses, and not just our eyesight, are bombarded by a hodgepodge of impressions that are sorted and filed and resurrected and rearranged again when needed to push our existence forward on the journey, or path if you will. But my eyes are especially precious and useful, and part of the information that I treat as key to my rational decisions is not only the structural integrity of objects roundabout, but also color, says Finley. Colors appeal to us, I believe, because they reawaken some deep instinct in our brains to something that transcends the material. Here I believe she alludes to yet another concept, namely faith, or the sister idea revelation. According to the preface of Finley's book, Color, quoting the seventh Dalai Lama, an image reflected in a mirror a rainbow in the sky and a pointed scene make their impressions upon the mind, but in essence are other than what they seem. Look deeply at the world and see an illusion, a magician's dream. However, all is not magic, Finley writes, but when I think of Indian yellow, I will always wonder whether the explanation that I have heard that cow's urine based on eating mango leaves is reality, or merely a reflection of reality, and whether this story is simply an example of somebody gently and literally taking a piss. I relish the morning light, though, and with it the colors and hues that give shape and design to the world we live in. With this infinite variety and perplexing puzzles that touch my eyes, my ears, my nose, my mouth, and my fingers. Good Hamlet, cast thy knighted color off and let thine eye look like a friend on Denmark. 
Shakespeare. I am especially keen on color and shape, and like so many tourists in our immediate universe, I whip out my camera, or iPhone or tablet, and try to save what otherwise is a very fleeting phenomenon in a moment of time that cannot be stayed otherwise. I am one of us, relying on the tools that voiced on us an undifferentiated mass of information, both false and the fact. Paul Klee writes on his visit to Tunis, Color has taken hold of me. No longer do I have to chase after it. I know that it has hold of me forever. That is the significance of this blessed moment. Thus, you and I also attempt to seize moments and to reconstruct them, to fit a new time, the next time, and possibly the last time for me.